Yeah, good evening, every one of us. We thank God for this evening and for, for the blessing of life. We want to do our final series. And so allow me pray, then we'll begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your name for your goodness. You've been faithful with us. You've taken good care of us. You've allowed us to have the presentations this week. We pray, Lord, that this final one will be a real blessing. And uh, as we end, we pray that thy presence still will be with us and allow us to meditate upon these things. For the honor and glory of your name, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, today we, we are going to consider the life of Jesus especially his youthful age, uh, which we are told is very important for the youths and the children. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was considering the book of John and we are told that uh, when Jesus comes, actually, we will be like him. Allow me just to read... Uh, okay, uh, the book of John, we are told that when Christ will come in the clouds, he is looking forward to meet those who will be like him. And we desire uh, to form an image, uh, to imitate his character so that we will be like him at his coming. And that is why we want to consider the youthful life of Jesus Christ so that it will help us to develop our personal relationship with him as we be like him uh, as dear youths and children. So I'll, I'll, I'll be able to share my screen and uh, get straight to, to the presentation. Yeah, if you're... Uh, if you are with me, the Bible is a little. It seems to be silent about the 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 child the childhood and the youthful age of Christ. But we are told there are a lot, especially for the youth, to learn about Christ in his childhood. Uh, this is uh, Luke one eighty one eight. We are told. And the child grew and was strong in spirit and was in uh, the desert till the day of his showing into Israel. So the child grew, Christ grew, was strong in spirit. That is his, uh, what is recorded concerning his childhood. But we we'll learn still uh, the word of God has a lot to say uh, concerning the childhood of Christ and his uh and uh, his youthful age that we can learn. We are told Jesus is our example. He's our perfect example in everything. And there are many who dwell with interest upon the period of his public ministry. Yeah, so uh, people are just interested uh, with his public ministry. Uh, but we are told the power is off, so I'll just uh, do the audio. Yeah, we are told that uh, while they pass and notice the teachings of his early years, but it is in his own life that he is the pattern for all children and youth. So it is in the home life of Christ it is in the home life of Christ that he is the pattern for youths and children. We are told Jesus was interested in children. He did not step out into our world a fully matured man. If he was not interested in children and youth, then he would have come to this world as a fully matured man. Had he done this, children would, have, uh, would not have had his example to copy. Christ was a child. He had the experience of a child. 
uh, he felt the disappointments and the trials that children feel. He knew the temptations of children and youth. But Christ was in his, in his child life and youthful life an example to all children and youth. Very interesting that the children has their perfect example. Christ, because Christ came, lived as a, a child, lived as a youth, so that the children and the youths will find a perfect example to follow. If Christ, uh, if Christ had never been a child himself, the youth might now think that he could not sympathize with them, but he lived their life, he lived their example, and all children and youth may find in Jesus to one whom they can carry all their grief, all their griefs, and all their disappointments. And in him, they will find a friend whom will help them. Wow. So our, our children and youth have a friend who will help them that understands their disappointment, understands their trials, because uh, understands their temptations because him also lived as a child, lived as a youth, and uh, he understands all this. It is the duty and privilege of every child to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Wow. So having our perfect example, uh, we are told that it is our privilege to follow him in, uh, to follow in its full steps, how he walked when he was a youth. When he was a child, those who are in, uh, those who are instructed by parents and teachers who love and fear God are under obligation to consider the life and example given them by Jesus Christ. Yeah, so we are to consider the life of Jesus Christ. Yes, in his uh, childhood, it will please the Lord Jesus to have the children asking for every spiritual grace to bring all their perplexities and trials to the Savior, for he knows how to help the children and the youth. So he understands how, because he passed through that stage, because he was a child himself and was once subjected to all the trials, disappointments, and perplexity to which children and youth are subject. So having seen that Jesus indeed uh, became a child and... Uh, also past the youthful age. And so we have a perfect example, which stands as a rebuke to every youth and child who perhaps may say that they cannot live a perfect life because even they don't have a, 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 an example of someone who, who had lived such a life. Uh, Jesus grew up in Nazareth. Jesus grew up in Nazareth. This was interesting for me, and that is why I placed it there. The, the place where Jesus grew up, very interesting, uh, has some good lessons for us that uh, we can learn. The childhood and youth, youth of Jesus when was spent in a little mountain village. There was no place on earth that would have been uh, honored by his presence. The palaces of kings will have been uh, prevailed in receiving him as a guest, but he passed by the homes of wealth and courts of royalty and the renowned seats of learning to make his home in obscure and despised Nazareth. Yeah, so Jesus uh, lived in Nazareth, uh, a little town on the, a, a, a little town in the village or a little place in the village, which was a, a little mountain actually in the village. Uh -huh. It continues, that is Desire of Ages 68. Christ's childhood and youth was scarcely noticed in the gospel. He was brought up in wicked, he was brought up in wicked Nazareth. The inhabitants were proverb, uh, proverbial for their selfishness, a virus, fraud, deceit, and general weakness. Mark this. So even staying in the little mountain village of Nazareth, it was 
are also surrounded with this, all these evil things, fraud, deceit, uh, and generally there were weak wickedness uh, in that place. And so this also stands as a rebuke as we will consider the life of uh, Christ as a youth for those who youths who uh, for the youths who actually uh, look at their circumstances, the situations that uh, they are in, the places, the environment that they are in, and say that indeed we cannot have a perfect life. So here comes uh, Jesus, who uh, stayed in a place where there is general weakness, uh, deceit, fraud, selfishness, and all this, but we shall see his perfect example in such a place. Christ, the redeemer of the world, was not situated where the influence surrounding him were the best calculated to preserve a life of purity and untainted morals. Yet, he was not contaminated. He was not free from temptations. Satan was honest and persevering in his efforts to deceive and overcome the son of God. God by his devices. Number two, he lived uh, in a contaminated area, but yet uh, again, Satan did not just leave him. Uh, Satan was working to hard by bringing many things to deceive him. Uh, bringing many things to deceive him. And so we cannot say that he was actually safe. And yet we shall see that he overcame all this. Christ retained a perfect identity of character. Although surrounded by unfavorable influence and place in every variety of circumstances, nothing, nothing supernatural occurred during the first 30 years of his life at Nazareth which would attract the attention of the people to himself. Yeah, so he lived a perfect human life, nothing, nothing supernatural. There was uh, any sin of uh, uh, the temptation overcome were not as a result of any supernatural uh, thing he did. Uh, we are told, uh, this is history, the uh, apocrypha, of the New Testament attempts to supply the silence of the scripture in the reference to the early life of Christ by giving a fancy sketchy of his childhood years. These writers relate wonderful incidents and miracles which characterize his childhood and distinguish him from any other child. So uh, his childhood does not distinguish um, uh, him from any childhood as these writers of the a New Testament puts, as we are told in the inspiration. They relate uh, fictitious tales and frivolous miracles, which they say he wrote, attributing to Christ the senseless and needless display of his divine power. Yeah, so I remember reading a quotation which says, we should not put in Christ uh, something that we ourselves cannot do. And we can we'll see that uh, actually, uh, all these things overcoming besides being in such an environment was as a result of obedience, which he also learned to be. Attributing to Christ the senseless and needless display of his divine power and certifying his character by attributing to him acts of revenge and deeds of mischief, which were cruel and ridiculous. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that is... Uh, uh, what we are told here that uh, all those the surrounding surrounded by an uh, surrounded by unfavorable influence and place in every variety of circumstances, nothing supernatural occurred during the first thirty years of his life in Nazareth. The education of Christ. Remember, we are, are talking about uh, our perfect example, and that is Christ. The education you received. I we talked much. We talked about this largely yesterday when we were considering uh, uh, the ed education which Christ received and the education he gave. The child Jesus did not receive instruction in the synagogue schools. 
His mother was his first human teacher. From her lips and from the scrolls of the prophet, he learned of the heavenly things. The very words which he himself had spoken to Moses from uh, for Israel, he was now taught at his mother's knee. And he advanced from childhood to youth. So he advanced by being taught by his mother. And he also learned from the scriptures, from the prophets, from the scrolls. Uh -huh. He did not seek the school of the rabbis. He needed not to be educated to obtain from such sources, for God was his instructor. So, wow. Here we find a child, a youth. Who, whose instructor was God. And we will see how he came up to have a perfect uh, character. And so if we follow his example, then we can tell uh, where we will be. The question asked during the Savior's ministry, how know this man letters having never learned, does not indicate that Jesus was, not, was unable to read, but merely that he had not received a rabbinical education. As John 5, 7, 15, 7, 15. Since he gained knowledge as we may do, his intimate acquaintance with the scriptures shows how diligent his early years were given to the study of God's word. I pray that uh, children and youth will give diligence in their early years to the to get acquainted with the scriptures as Christ. And spread out before him was the great library of God's created work. We see, we saw yesterday that was nature. He, uh, he who had made all things studied the lessons uh, which his own hand had written in, uh, uh, in earth and sea and sky. Apart from the unholy ways of the world, he gathers stores of scientific knowledge from nature. Wow. We said yesterday that uh, true education does not do away with uh, science. And so we find that Christ, our example, also draws or gathered a stores of scientific knowledge from nature. He studied the life of plants and animals, the life of uh, and the life of man. From his earliest years, he, he was possessed of one purpose. He lived to bless others. For this, he found uh, resources in nature. New ideas of ways and means flash into his mind as he studied plant life and animal life. So you see how his mind will expand as he, uh, uh, as he was studying the in the nature. Continually was seeking to draw from things seen illustration by which to present the living oracles of God. The parables by which during his ministry uh, he loved to teach his lessons of truth show how open his spirit was to the influence of nature and how he had gathered the spiritual teachings from the surrounding of his daily life. A good example is in the book of John uh, chapter 15. Every child may gain knowledge as a Jesus did. Every child may gain knowledge as Jesus did. As we try to become acquainted with our Heavenly Father through his word, angels will draw near our mind, uh, near our minds will be strengthened, our character will be elevated and refined. We shall become more like our Savior. As we behold the beauty and grand in nature, our affection go out after God. While the spirit is old, the soul is invigorated by coming in contact with the infinite through his works. Communion with God through prayer develops the mental and moral faculties and the spiritual power strengthen as we cultivate thoughts upon spiritual things. So we see that besides Christ uh, living in such a decayed uh, small village, he was an overcome. He, 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 he was never... Uh, contaminated with the sin, and so uh, it was. It was uh, something interest me that how how what's the secret of his overcoming in such a corrupt uh, age? Yesterday we saw how uh, how uh, this man called 
Enoch escaped the corruption of his age. Uh, and today we want to see our perfect example, Jesus Christ, how he escaped and where was his secret. We are told Christ was the only one who walked the earth upon whom they arrested no taints of sin. He was pure, spotless, and undefiled. Even in his childhood, even though Satan seeked many ways to destroy him, to make him sin, but we are told he came out pure, spotless, and undefiled, that there should be one without the defilement of sin upon the earth. Uh, greatly disturbed the author of sin. This issue greatly disturbed the author of sin. And as youths will consecrate themselves to perfectly follow the example of Christ, and by the grace of Christ, they will live to die to sin. It will be a rebuke to the kingdom of Satan, whose claims are that uh, the laws of God are so burdensome, and there is no one who can keep them into perfection. So we are told that this should be one without the defilement of sin upon the earth, greatly disturb the author of sin. And he left no means and tried to overcome Christ with his really deceptive power. But our Savior, well, listen to this, uh, dear youths, our Savior relied upon his heavenly Father for wisdom and strength to resist and overcome the temper. The spirit of his heavenly Father anim animated and regulated his life. So right in his childhood, where was his secret of our coming? He relied upon his heavenly Father for wisdom and strength to resist and overcome the temper. And it is thus that every child of God, every youth is going to overcome the enemy uh, with his uh, deceptive power. They will rely on the strength of uh, God. Uh, the spirit of his heavenly father animated and regulated his life. He was sinless, virtue and purity characters, characterized his life. Uh -huh. As Christ is our example in all things, we are if we imitate his example in earnest, importunate prayer to God, that we may have strength in his name, who never yielded to the temptations of Satan to receive the devices of willy force, we shall not be overcome by him. So if we follow in the example of Christ, what was that example of uh, total dependence, relying upon the power of God to overcome the evil one? Children and youth, if you will be kept from the paths of sin, as you have not experienced in discerning the devices of Satan, your only safety is in prayer. Wow. And Christ did this. How did Christ rely on the power of uh uh of the on the power of God to overcome sin? We are told that in a great while before dawn, uh he went in a secret place to pray. And out of that prayer, God will give him power uh, to overcome the evil one. And so we are to follow his example. Lay upon all the secrets of the heart to the search of the infinite eye and plead with God to make you pure and strong uh, and to arm you completely with the great conflicts of life. Faith grows by conflict with doubt. Virtue gathers strength by the resistance of temptation. So he overcame by surrendering his life uh, to the power of God, to be controlled by God. And so God will not lead him to sin, but rather will lead him uh, to the, the, right, the, the right path. Example of Christ in the home, the home religion of Christ. Uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ in his youth, the divine testimony is given, and the child grew work strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. After the visit to Jerusalem in his boyhood, he returned with his parents and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. So we see in his home, a re, a home a relationship, number one, he was subjected to his parents. Uh -huh. And Jesus increased, and this was 
uh, this, uh, the reasons for him even increasing in wisdom and station and being in favor with God and men. So we cannot be in favor with God when we are not obedient uh, or in favor with men. So we see he was in favor with God and so was he with men. In his earth, earth life, Christ was an example to all the human family and he was obedient and helpful in the home. So he was not only obedient, but he was very helpful in the home. He learned the carpenter's trade and worked with his own hands in the little shop at Nazareth. The Bible says the child grew and worked strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. As he worked in childhood and youth, mind, body were developed. And we've seen, of course, he was also a uh, spiritual. So the spiritual aspect is not left out as well. He did not use his physical power recklessly, but in such a way as to keep them in health that he might do the best work in every line. Wow. So we see his home religion, being obedient, being useful, helpful to the parents. And uh, we talked about that, but now seeing it as from our perfect example. He lived to please, honor, and glorify his father in the common things of life. I want to believe, uh, and even so to his mother, uh, the little duties of life, the common things, uh, just bringing the, the equipment, the tools, uh, cleaning them, uh, managing them well. All this he glorified his father. His work began in consecrating the lowly trade of the craftsmen who toiled for their daily bread. So he helped his father uh, to toil for the daily bread. He was doing God's service. Listen, we talked about this. Yes, uh, we talked about this. He was doing God's service just as much when laboring in the carpenter's bench as when working miracles for the multitude. So some perhaps things that home religion engaging into these things is not very uh, very important. But the Lord says that when Christ was faithful at home du doing home duties, he was counted of heaven as doing God's service just as he was doing miracles to the multitudes and uh, uh, preaching. And every youth who follows Christ's example of faithfulness and obedience in his lowly home may claim those words spoken of him by the Father through the, the Holy Spirit, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delight. Wow. Jesus carried into his labor cheerful task. So he was not uh, working with uh, 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 a lot of gloomy uh, face. And this, he, we are told that he was cheerful and tact in his work. He was very happy with the work he was doing. Why? Because he was doing everything as to the Father. He was not doing it. He was doing things, understanding that he is in, his, in the business of the Father. He is working for the Father. He is in the service of the Father, who, are, who is in heaven. It requires much patience and spirituality to bring Bible religion into the home life and into the workshop, to bear the strain of worldly business and yet keep the eye single to the glory of God. So he was doing all this, and yet I... His eye was still, still single to the glory of God. He was still faithful uh, with God. So these normal duties uh, that he engaged in did not draw him from, uh, draw his eyes from being single to the glory of God. I mean, he was still faithful uh, to the cause of God, to God. This is where Christ was a helper. He was never so full of word, worldly cares as to have no time or thought for heavenly things. Often, he expressed the gladness of his heart by singing psalms and heavenly songs. Often, the dwell dwellers see how he was a blessing to the society. Often, the dwellers in Nazareth 
had his voice raised in praise and thanksgiving to God. He held communion with heaven in song, and as his companions complained of weariness from labor, they were cheered by the sweet melody from his lips. His praise seemed to banish the evil angel angels and like incense filled the place with fragrance. The mind of his hearings, uh, hearers were carried away from their earthly exile to the heavenly home. Amen. So we see how faithful he was to the present duties or that was the, the duties that laid uh, before him. He never said that, you know, I'm, 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 I'm from above and I should be in my father's business uh, preaching and doing all this, but he was first responsible in the home. And by that, we see how it was a blessing to the society. By that, uh, we see how it was a blessing to the society. And this was a result of the education which he received. It was not a, 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 as a result of some uh, uh, supernatural uh, supernatural workings. It was as a result of obedience and uh, submitting himself to the divine will. Final words of encouragement to the youths. Having seen the life of Christ, having seen how he perfected his character, living in the world of sin uh we have the i have these final words for us uh to actually encourage us you can be faithful soldier of jesus christ we can be faithful soldiers of jesus christ if your example is christ like so if for us to be faithful soldiers of jesus christ we have to be Christ-like. We have to copy, uh, we have to imitate the character of Christ in his youth. So we have to be Christ-like youths. If you do not say a word, if you do not say a word, we'll, if you do not say a word, we'll be a help to many. A uh, patient, con let me begin. If your example is Christ-like, that alone I missed that. That alone, if we are Christ like you, we are faithful soldiers. We are told that that alone, if you do not say a word, even if we will utter no word, if we will not give profession of our faith, will be a help to many. Patient con continuance in well-doing will help others to place their feet in the paths of truth and righteousness. Some may ridicule you for being so straight, yeah, uh, this is so true, and we, it's in the ex childhood of Christ, he was, uh, he was even termed as coward, strict, and all these things, uh, but did not make the, make him not to be faithful. They may call you a self, uh, they, they may call you self righteous but be careful to start right. So what we need to do, we have to count the cost, we have to start right, and then keep quietly uh, on. The history of Daniel is all written, would, um, is all, is all, the history of Daniel, if all was written, would open chapters before you that would show you the temptation he had, he had to meet of radical envy, hatred, but he learned to master the, the difficulties. So uh, we we must learn if we must be soldiers of Christ, who will be Christ like? If we have to be Christ like you, then we have to be masters of circumstances. Circumstances should not overcome us. As we see, uh, the, the environment of Christ was not favorable for the perfection of Christian character, and yet he perfected his character. Our environment, full of mockery and all these things, hatred, envy. Yet, uh, we are required still to be Christ-like youths. He did not trust in his own strength. So this is an example of Daniel, but we were looking at the example of Christ, who was also dependent upon the strength of uh, his father. 
He laid his whole soul and his difficulties open in his uh, to his heavenly father, and he believed God he, uh, had him, and he was comfortable, uh, comforted and blessed. He rose superior to radical, and so will everyone who is an overcome. Daniel acquired a, a serene and cheerful state of mind because he believed God was his friend and helper. The taxing duties he had to be performed were made light because he brought the light and love of God into his work. Wow. I didn't. Uh, actually, that's very interesting. That's very interesting to see. The taxing duties he had to perform were made light because he brought the light and love of God into his work. Uh, just as Christ, he was, he did, he engaged in his work with cheerfulness and tact, and that brought made the uh, the the duty even lighter. And thus is that is our example. Sometimes we may think that uh, uh, the work we have is a lot, but if we we'll do it cheerfully, if we we'll do it as 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 doing the service of God then the work will be light. We are not encouraging overworking. For our sake, Jesus emptied himself of his glory. He clothed his divinity with his humanity, that he might touch humanity, that his personal presence might be among us, that we might know that he was acquainted with all our trials and sympathizes with all our grief that every son and daughter of Adam might understand that Jesus is the friend of sin as well. Be of good courage, dear youth. Jesus is our personal friend and savior. He loves us and he noticed the little brown sparrow. Uh -huh. And if he noticed the little brown sparrow, how much more will he love and care for us? The memory grows weak uh, when it when it is not exercised, so will our faith and hope and courage become feeble unless we look unto Jesus with all confidence and uh, that a little child looks to its mother. By beholding him, we become changed into his righteousness. Let no one thought of unbelief be woven into our religious experience. The Lord will be our efficiency and exceeding great reward and exceeding great reward so uh let's be of good courage jesus is our personal friend and let's develop a personal relationship with him having accepted to be our personal friend let's have a thought of him uh, allow me to uh read how we can do this in the book steps to christ 58 as we come to an end, Steps to Christ 58. Very interesting. Uh, as we are encouraged that Christ is our uh, personal friend. And uh, yeah, so... Fifty-eight paragraph two. Let me share my screen and so you can be able to see. You can see it. This is what it says. Uh huh. Sorry. Uh, who has the heart? This is a question. Who has the heart? With whom are our thoughts? Of whom do we love to converse? Who, who, who has our warmest affection and our best energies? If we are Christ, listen, if we are Christ, if we uh, want to be Christ-like youths, then our thoughts are with him. This is us building a, a relationship with him. Our thoughts will be with him. Our sweetest thoughts are of him. All we have and are are consecrated to him. We long to bear his image. Wow. Breathe his spirit. Do his will and please him in all things. 
we are said that be let be encouraged. Uh, Christ is our personal friend. Ha. When we also in turn, we are we read in the book of uh, Proverbs that a friend a friend must show himself friendly. We have to show ourselves friendly to Christ, who is our personal friend. How our thoughts are of Him. Our sweetest thoughts should be of Him. All we have are and should be consecrated to Him. We should long to bear His image, breathe His spirit, do His will, and then finally please Him in all things. That's very interesting. Please, uh, Please Christ in all things uh, for his promise that he's our personal friend and uh, we should be encouraged with that. Finally, uh, finally, let every word you utter, as we've seen in the book Steps to Christ, let every word you utter, every line you write. These are my final words to the dear youths. Let every word you utter. Let every, uh, every line you write give evidence of unwavering faith. Do not think of Jesus as the friend of someone else, but as your personal friend. Amen. Do not think of Jesus as someone else's friend, but make him your personal friend. Build a personal relationship with him. As we've seen uh, in the old series, how this is possible. Build a personal relationship with him. Make him your personal friend because he's willing to. Never are you to le left to struggle alone. In this life, in the decayed age that we are in, it's not, not the desire of God that the dear youths and children will struggle alone. Christ promises that he wants to be with them. He wants to help them in their struggles. They only need to yield, to consecrate uh their their life their their will to christ christ says lo i am with you always and angels are your helpers the comforter that jesus promised to send abides with you amen so christ is with us in the presence uh of the holy spirit the comforter whom he promised to send and uh he is just as willing to help us, of a, help us uh, overcome uh, today, to be victors, so that when he comes in the clouds, we when he appears in the clouds, we shall be like him. And I long to be like him. May that be a blessing to us in Jesus' name. Uh, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. We are very much grateful that children and youths are not left out. The early childhood of the youth of Christ is our perfect example. And so we thank you that even as you mediate for us, you left us a way to follow. We pray, Lord, that uh, you will strengthen the dear youths who desire to follow thy ways and be true to you, to be Christ-like, that you will help them. Bless us. We thank you for allowing us to come to an end of this series and thanking you especially for having been faithful. The power has been there, Lord. The internet has been uh, there for us. And we pray, Lord, that as we've gotten the privilege to, to uh, drink from the heavenly and eat from the heavenly bakery, we may be uh, filled with these words and seek to honor you and glorify your name. May you bless those who will be watching later as well. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.